It started with a holiday. On the 30th of June 2014, a group of friends from Germany travelled to Bulgaria's Golden Sands Resort. The resort is especially popular with European tourists who are looking for a low-cost break in the sunshine. For the first few days, everything was going fine. The group enjoyed everything the resort had to offer. This changed on the 6th of July. After straying away from the rest of the group, 28-year-old Lars Mietank got into a physical altercation with a rival football team supporter. Lars sustained a nasty head injury during this fight and had to see a doctor. It turns out the blow to Lars's head had been so powerful that he'd ruptured his eardrum. The doctor told Lars to get some rest and prescribed him with antibiotics. This meant he couldn't fly home, but he was happy to board a different flight when it was safe for him to do so. Lars's friends were willing to stay with him so they could all fly home together, but Lars said he'd be fine flying by himself and told them to go without him. Lars needed somewhere else to stay while he recovered from his injury. He chose the Hotel Colour in Varna, most likely because it was budget friendly and because it was just a 15 minute drive away from Varna Airport. This is when things took a very strange turn. Lars was captured on Hotel CCTV, pacing up and down the foyer and even hiding in an elevator at one point. Hotel staff also witnessed this odd behaviour. I just want to add that when I heard about Lars's behaviour at the hotel, it reminded me of the case of Eliza Lamb. I know it's another very well covered case, but if you'd like me to make a video about it, please do let me know. Just before midnight, Lars called his mother and explained that he didn't feel safe. In fact, it wasn't that he felt unsafe, it was that he was insisting that he was not safe. He asked her to contact his bank to get his credit cards cancelled, his reason for this being that four men were coming to kill him. This was obviously extremely worrying for Lars's mother, who booked him a flight home. Sometime later, Lars sent his mother a text message asking what Cefuroxime 500 was. Cefuroxime 500 was the name of the antibiotic he had been prescribed. She thought it was a strange question for him to have asked. Around 6am, Lars left the hotel and got a taxi to Varna Airport. There was another passenger in the taxi who later said that Lars had had dilated pupils. Severe trauma to the head can sometimes cause this to happen. Lars wouldn't be able to board his flight until he'd been checked over by a medic, so he made his way to the airport's medical room. CCTV captured this happening. 45 minutes later, a construction worker entered the medical room, and this sent Lars spiralling into a state of absolute fear. He was seen running out of the airport, this time without his luggage. He then climbed a fence and ran across a sunflower field before disappearing into the woods beyond. That was the last time anybody saw Lars Mietank. His family has been searching for him for more than six years, to no avail. We're going to pay a visit to the Unresolved Mysteries subreddit, which you may have noticed is one of my favourite places to find theories. There are two theories in particular that I'd like to bring to your attention. Here is the first one. People speculate that perhaps injuries from the fight may be a traumatic brain injury or a combination of that plus medication caused his paranoia or possible psychosis. Another view is that the reason he even got in a fight with several people in the first place was that the onset of psychosis was already occurring. People experiencing some acute mental illness are not necessarily the best at judging the risk in a situation, and may behave inappropriately towards others, which increases their risk of being the victim of a crime. There's something I didn't tell you about that fight. Lars's friends don't believe it happened. A Reddit user had this to say. The case seems so strange because a lot of important details are missing, especially in English news stories. Part of it is because some details are lost in translation from the original German stories, and that the main source is purposefully omitting details. If you look at all the stories from 2014, you can get a reasonably clear picture about what happened, but again, most of the information is found between the lines and therefore hard to bring across without an exhaustive translation. So here are, from memory, 
some facts that are missing from a lot of English language stories. The friends who accompanied Lars on the Bulgaria trip described his behaviour as very strange and untypical throughout the whole trip. He, for example, skipped most of his meals. Another example his friends put forward is Lars's story of the fight with the FCB fans. Lars used this story to explain why he went missing the night before and where he got his injury. All his friends explicitly state that they didn't believe him a single bit. Every witness describes his behaviour as strange, agitated, confused or even paranoid. This includes both doctors he visited, his own mother and the taxi driver that took him to the airport. Someone else said, My hot take in this case is the fight never happened, and him claiming a fight happened was just evidence of his mental issues. Ruptured eardrums happen all the time from colds leading to infections in the inner ear. Would easily be exacerbated or caused during his flight there. There's no evidence of the fight thus far. No cameras, no witnesses, just his word. I don't think the fight happened. So, even if the fight didn't happen, Lars still had a ruptured eardrum. He would have had to do something or have something done to him to result in the injury. I think the fact that his friends didn't believe his explanation says a lot. Maybe they didn't believe him because he wasn't the kind of guy who they could see getting into a fight. Another theory suggests that Lars Mitank could have been a drug mule. A Reddit user speculates. Instead of Lars himself running the drugs, I believe it is far more likely his friends who flew back without him were the ones who had run drugs back to Germany, and he stayed behind as some sort of insurance. I believe this theory for a few reasons. The primary one being that he ran out of the airport after an airport official or security official interrupted his medical examination by the airport doctor to speak with the doctor about an unrelated manner. Lars may have thought his friends had gotten caught and he was about to be arrested, hence why he ran out of the airport without his luggage or cell phone and hopped over a fence. I also find his friend's explanation that he experienced a ruptured ear canal after a bar fight and he was acting strange to be implausible, because why would they leave a friend alone in a foreign country who they believed was acting strange and claimed had disappeared for an entire night during the trip? It just doesn't pass the common sense test. The story of him acting bizarre due to a ruptured ear canal and then seeing a doctor who they claim said he might have to stay in the country for 30 days is too far-fetched. As others have pointed out, there is very minor surgery buying ENT that could have been performed pretty easily and would have allowed him to fly back immediately. Why would he choose to instead stay in a foreign country alone for an undetermined period of days? After his friends flew back, he reportedly checked into a seedy cheap hotel, the kind of place a man involved in a drug running operation might stay or be kept at until he is let go. Some people don't seem to be completely on board with this idea. Lars Mitank was a strong and independent 28 year old man, not a toddler in a hotel room. It is perfectly sensible that his friends would leave him to catch a later flight alone. It makes the most financial sense of all. Nobody imagined they'd never see him again. I think people are putting way too much stock into this. I am 28 years old and my friends would probably question me, then realise I'm a grown man and can make my own decisions. The issue, I suppose, with both of these theories is that they don't concern themselves with the thing that I believe should be theorised about where Lars Mitank went. A lot of people want to come up with possible explanations for how strangely he was acting, which is understandable, but the real mystery lies within the fact that he disappeared in Bulgaria six years ago and hasn't been seen since. A Facebook page entitled Findet Lars Mitank continues to be updated to this day. As well as being a place for people to share their theories, it's a place where they can stand in solidarity with Lars's family and show them continued support. They hope that someday, Lars will be found, and this hopefulness is summed up by a post from 2015 quite well. Hello to all who are so brave for Lars. Stay tuned and don't give it up. To give you courage, here only briefly is my personal experience in a similarly desperate situation. In 2010, my brother disappeared from his apartment. I reported him missing when I assumed he was in a helpless position. For a long time, there was only uncertainty and no evidence. 
but in April 2011, I received a surprise call from the police that my brother was found in Spain, penniless and on the street. With the help of the embassy there, I could get him back home. He was all the way from Germany to the south of Spain, just with a backpack. He lived from the fruits of the forest, water from rivers, and indeed met nice people who gave him arms, so I think that you must consider this possibility. Thank you for watching, stay safe, and have a lovely day.